supporting you in your dog parenting journey. The Dynamic Dog Owner with Debbie Potter. Hello and welcome to the Dynamic Dog Owner. I hope you are well and having a wonderful week. Before we get started on today's topic, just a reminder that very, very soon we have our online hub, Potter Paw Academy, starting. A hub of online videos that you can access wherever you are in the world, in the country, from your bedroom, um, in your pyjamas, from your garden. Trainer support in your pocket for you to make headway in your training journey. The comments of the podcast have got a link so that you can sign up to be the first to receive information. Um, and I would love to see you in our new Paul Academy hub. So today's topic is all about retractable leads. Now, let me state my opinion. <laughs> if you have ever spoken to me before, you will know I despise retractable dog leads. I do not like them one little bit. Um, and I'm often asked, why? What's so wrong about them? So that's what this podcast is dedicated to. And of course, this is my opinion. Uh, it's my podcast. It's my space. I can give you my opinion. There are obviously going to be people that completely disagree with me. And that's absolutely fine. You, you know, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. This is mine. Um, but I'm going to caveat it by first of all saying I have used a retractable dog lead. I used to use a retractable dog lead before my opinions changed. But maybe that was because of the dog I was using it with. Um, and also the situation I was in at the time. So I used a retractable dog lead on my first dog, um, which again, if you've listened to every single episode of the podcast, you will know was an extremely perfect, placid golden retriever um, who I rescued when he was two and a half. So he was two and a half when I got him. Um, at home, we would never really use one. We would normally use a normal fixed length short lead um, and then he was off lead. But I used one every time we went on holiday because we used to, and we still do, go hiking in the Lake District. And I am very, very conscious that in the Lake District there are sheep everywhere, which obviously I love. The Herdwicks are amazing. But you don't know where, wherever you're walking, there could be a sheep around the corner. Um, and I don't want to risk my dog's safety, one, when I'm on holiday, two, around sheep, so I would use a retractable lead so that he could go ahead and still feel a little bit freer, um, maybe pull me up the hills occasionally. So he had a little bit more freedom, but he was still under control. So that's the time that I would use a retractable dog lead with him. But he was a calm, relaxed, placid adult dog. He didn't pull on the lead. I mean, basically, he was just perfect. Um, <laughs> he was just perfect. He didn't pull on the lead. He didn't react to anyone. He wasn't... Um, sort of rude about saying hello to people. He didn't acknowledge people. He didn't jump up at people. Um, basically, he was the perfect dog outside, out and about. There was nothing I could fault him with, apart from occasionally chasing the lady dogs if they were in season. But that's fair enough, right? Apart from that, he was absolutely perfect. Um, so a retractable dog lead worked for those times when we were on holiday and I didn't want to let him off. Um, in his latter years, when he became a little bit deaf, I used a retractable lead on our daily walks because I wasn't comfortable letting him off um, because he didn't hear me. But again, he was old. He plodded along in front of me. So retractable leads are a really popular choice and they do work if you have a slow, chilled adult dog. But the problems come when they are used with big, strong dogs with young excitable puppies with reactive dogs um, or dogs that don't have perfect manners um, and then they can cause more problems than they tend to solve <laughs> and I understand why people use them um, you know a retractable lead in itself is not an al always a bad thing there are many factors to consider as I say if your dog's perfect if you know they don't have any any training issues or any training needs then a retractable lead can be okay in the correct environment if not they can be a problem um, especially I find with young dogs inexperienced owners bouncy puppies etc so they're not bad in every situation but just think about why you're using it um, and obviously they are useful because they do give your dog a little bit more freedom if you're not comfortable letting them off lead um, which is a good thing don't get me wrong. They are much easier for people to manage. That is something I will definitely agree with. They are easier for people to manage than an alternative long line. Um, but 
we're going to look at why I don't like them. Um, so obviously I've talked about these already. Do people actually know what a retractable lead is? Let's get that out there first of all. Um, so a retractable lead is when the, I mean, you've probably seen them before. There's like a hand or big plastic handle that you can hold on to. And inside that lead, there is a thin either cord or tape. And it is very, very thin that is wound onto like a springy device thing. So the the cord, the lead is wrapped up around like a, a wheel almost inside the handle it's spring loaded and it has a lock on it so it's a bit like a tape measure I suppose when you pull out a tape measure um you pull it out when you let go it pings back in um but you can lock it at certain distances that's effectively what a retractable lead is so your dog's attached to the end of it as they move further away it pulls it a little bit longer and a little bit longer and a little bit longer if your dog moves closer to you, it goes back inside the handle. So you've always got a tight, straight lead between you and your dog. You can lock it at certain lengths if you don't want them to go too far away. Um, and it attaches onto your dog's collar or your harness, however a normal lead would. The button allows you to either let the flow come in and out or you can stop it. Um, and that's basically what they are. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, trying to explain it is quite tricky. Um, <laughs> but why are they a problem so first of all and obviously these guys come in loads of lengths but i think the standard one is about five meters but you can get them in like seven and a half ten meters so why do i find that they are problematic and these may be things that you haven't thought of before and they're all things that i have seen happen or experienced so first of all the cord so the actual lead as i say it's either a cord or a tape they are so blimmin dangerous um the cords are incredibly thin and they effectively act like a bit of a cheese wire. Um, so you can't grab hold of them like you would a normal lead to shorten it quickly. Um, because if they scrape against your skin, wowzers, can that hurt? Um, they can cut hands, they can be good friction burns, as any lead can, but these are really thin, so they do it even more. Um, it has been sort of in the news um, or cases you hear of where they have degloved fingers, um, um, cut off like bits, um, burns, getting wrapped around legs, getting wrapped around hands. There was an incident a few years ago that I heard of um, on social media with one getting tied around a child's neck and tightening. And thankfully, the, oh, the human, the parent, saw and whipped it off really damn quick. Um, now, this isn't just for you, but this is for other people too. Because it's not just about what you, you know, if you're prepared to take that risk, cool. You know, if you're going, look, I'm quite a sensible person. I'm not going to grab hold of it. I'm going to be really sensible with it. Great. That's our intention, right? But we know incidents happen, accidents happen. But it's also about what happens to other people and other dogs in the vicinity. So I've had it firsthand. We were out for a walk many, many moons ago. Um, I don't think we even had kids. So it was a very long time ago. Um me and my husband walking in the lakes and somebody walked towards us with a bouncy bouncy dog on the end of a lead and they went round the back of my husband they were trying to play with our dog he wasn't really interested because he wasn't bothered um and the puppy or it looked, it looked like a puppy like young dog bouncy bouncy went round as to like the back of my husband to say hello to our dog our dog moved to the other side the puppy went in front of my husband and then back again tying the lead around my husband's legs and then ran off he had friction burns across the front of his shins and i i haven't unchecked recently um <laughs> but oh, i know for at least 10 years he had scars across the front of his legs because of that incident now yeah fair enough you've decided to risk that but we hadn't decided that, that we were prepared to take the risk of a of a tractable extendable whatever lead um when we were out for a walk that's not fair Equally, the same thing happens to other dogs um, because we talk about dogs interacting, but with a lead that is that thin and it extending and retracting, if your dog goes to play with another dog and they happen to get caught up, you can't drop your lead because the lead retracts back instantly. You may find that then another dog or even your dog gets that thin wire around their leg, around another dog's stomach, and then they get injured. So it's not just about going for a walk 
And that's why I say they are very dependent on the situation. Old dog plod along, fine. Young dogs, dogs are going to be interacting. Personally, for me, it's a no-go. So that's one reason. Another reason. They are a really thin lead, which we've highlighted. If you're going to be putting a massive dog on the end of it, you are putting an awful lot of trust in a very, very, very small, thin lead cord. Um, they can break but you're not going to know it's broken because it's wound up inside the lead. So you're going to, if you do choose to use one, you're going to have to regularly pull all that lead out and inspect it and make sure there are no little tears, little nicks in it. Because if there are, or even if there aren't, um, you can't see where the lead actually attaches to this mechanism to check if that's in, in sort of good quality and not broken or damaged in any way. If your dog is a strong dog, or even, let's face it, little dogs can still be blimmin' strong. If your dog suddenly bolts at full speed and you've got a little tear in it, or it isn't, you know, it's weakened somewhere, then that lead can easily break. And again, I remember it happening to me. Um, so if that happens, say potentially you've lost your dog, B, you're likely to injure yourself, the cord's gonna snap back at you and fling you in the face. Um, even if it's a little dog, this can still happen. You know, over time, it's going to wear, it's going to become flimsy and it's going to make a potential break even more likely. Now, depending on where this break happens, um, what if all the lead then retracts back into the device and you've got no lead? So say it breaks a metre away from your dog or even a foot away from your dog, you've got no lead then because it's all wound up. You can't even, you can't get it out um if a normal standard lead breaks you could tie the two pieces together you could get a piece and tie it around your dog you've still got the lead that you can use but with a retractable lead all of that lead length so all of the tape will instantly be back inside that device and you've got nothing to hold on to your dog with um, and i say it did happen to me once um when um my dog we were i think we were out for a walk again he, this is the one he was really old and we used it all the time love him um it all of a sudden broke and I was lucky that I was about two meters from my car um, and it broke with about a meter left but it broke and left me with that tiny piece and I've also had it where it flung backwards and this is a really I mean I'm as you guys know I'm very honest I will talk about every single mistake I've made because I am not perfect um, I do make poor decisions as does everybody um, but we have had the instant where um, we got injured or I didn't get injured it was actually my daughter I don't know if she remembers the story she probably doesn't um, so <laughs> We were out for a walk. Um, again, our dog was older. He was probably, she was four. So he would have probably been about nine, I think. Um, so, you know, an older dog plodding along. Typical independent four-year-old. She was in the buggy. Um, we were quickly walking. I remember the day well. We were quickly walking because we had to go and collect my, um, or go to my eldest's school sports day. Can I hold the lead? Mum, I want to hold the lead. Mummy, I want to hold the lead. And she was very, very determined. I said, okay, you hold the lead. Um, and she was holding the retractable lead. Dog was plodding along in front and she was quite okay to hold it because he didn't pull. As I said, he was the perfect one. Um, before we got my current three, who are definitely not perfect. Um, he plodded along happily in front of her. Um, and we got to a point where we could let the lead off. And I don't know what, how or what I was thinking, but she was holding on to the retractable lead. And I went over and let go or unclipped the hook off of the dog and let go of the lead. <laughs> and the, the lead went retracting back into the device at super speed as they do. The lead clasp flung up and hit her in the nose um, and gave her a big bruise and a massive nosebleed. Um, <laughs> bad mum award right here. Um, and in hindsight, why the hell did I let go of it? Um, but it was a mistake to be made, right? Um, Q was then obviously having to sort that out, get home, go to sports day with a big bloody nose. Um, great, but that's the danger of retractable leads. It wouldn't have happened if it was a fixed length lead. Um, I hope you're realizing why I don't use them now. Um, <laughs> and obviously with that dog, we did carry on using them because we could, cause he was old to love him. Okay. So <laughs> tangles. And I know again, this sounds like silly, but dog leads do get tangled up. Um, and it's really common to get leads tangled. But with your thin leads, I think they can get tangled so much more easier. So much more easier. Really good English there. Um, they can get tangled around you. 
they can pull you off your feet etc this of course you know can happen with a long line so if you've got a long lead say for example you've got your retractable lead you fix it at long length so it's not retracting um so it's just a long lead like a long lead would be if it gets tangled it's much much thinner it's going to get in knots a lot quicker um, and obviously the same problem is going to happen that you can then get tangled up in it yourself, your feet, your dog's feet, other people's feet. It can happen with a long lead. Absolutely. And you go, what's the difference then? If it can happen with a long lead, they can happen with a retractable. Yes, it's a nuisance. Yes, it's a pain. But the downs, the sort of risk factor you've got with a long line, it, it, cartoon wise, it's just going to tie your feet up and you're going to ping on the floor. Um, <laughs> but... With a retractable lead, it could tie you up and then cause injury because it's that thin. Um, and obviously, if you do two dogs or two people interacting, if you're a fearful dog or then gets attached, tangled up with a really excitable one, they're in a stuck situation where they can't get out. Of course, that can happen with a normal lead too. But I think we've got an extra risk with the lead being so thin that you can't then grab hold of it because it's going to pull through your hands. Um then you've got injuries to our dog. We've talked about how we can get injured. We can get friction burns. We can have our fingers damaged, etc. Um, what about injuries to our dogs? So dogs are lack some spatial awareness, some dogs. I know one of mine forgets to break. And I'm like, break, as he comes hurtling towards you. And he kind of careers into you because he hasn't worked out how to break yet. Um, <laughs> but injuries to dogs are possible and i think potentially more possible with a retractable lead because if your dog is running and suddenly hits the end of the lead they are going to obviously have a whiplash effect um it can the jerking motion can then obviously damage their spine damage their trachea cause injuries yes we can list lessen the risk by attaching it to a harness over a collar yes it's more likely to happen with a long line but the difference again between the two is with your retractable lead, it's going to happen so quickly that they rush to the end of it if they're on the, you know, where it can come in and out. You can't grab hold of it because it's so thin and going to hurt your hands. So you're naturally going to not be able to do that. Whereas with a long line, if you're holding it gathered up or if it is trailing, it's that much thicker and more substantial that you can grab hold of it because you've got the whole lead there you have more opportunity to grab hold of the lead and shorten that lead and risk your dog rushing to the end of their lead and having that big whiplash effect at the end of a long line or a long verb retractable. Long, long line, it can happen just the same, but I think we've got more opportunity to prevent it or to manage it as it's happening because we can grab hold of the lead. It's not going to hurt us in the same way. Okay, there's quite a long list here. You can see. Um, so then we've got roadside risk. So being near a road with a retractable lead. As we said earlier, some can extend up to 10 metres, which is a long time. Yeah, obviously, your dog can trot along 10 metres ahead of you or 5 metres ahead of you. It gives them a lovely amount of freedom. Um, you know, it, it saves you having to handle the lead, etc. But it means a situation can get out of control really, really quickly. In a roadside situation, this is even more problematic. It's going to cause even more potential dangers. Um, if you're in a big open space then naturally they are going to be um, you know, free to go either side of you. It. it doesn't really matter. But if you're walking along a roadside and you're on the extended version where they can just come and go as they please, 10 metres ahead, 2 metres, 5 metres, and carry on moving. If you turn a corner and your lead sort of round the corner, how do you know what's around that corner? Um, there could be another dog, there could be a person, it could be a road. Um, if, you know you're walking along and suddenly your dog could be five meters ahead of you and a car pulls out of their driveway without you noticing they see you but they might not see your dog there's an issue um and however far your dog can get ahead of you they can also go left to the right so if you're walking on the roadside and your dog is five meters ahead of you in a split second they can suddenly be in the middle of the road and you may think oh that's not going to happen it absolutely can, and I have seen it happen on numerous occasions, and it is absolutely terrifying, whether you are driving, whether you are walking, wherever, whatever, when you suddenly see a dog who was five metres ahead suddenly in the road. Thankfully, every time I have seen it, the driver has been so on it and had really quick thankfully really quick responses and reflexes and managed to break and not hurt the dog 
but it can happen. I've heard of it not having as great outcomes. Do you want to risk your dog's safety by letting them walk five metres ahead of you on a road? I would say not. If you're walking along a road, obviously you can um, lock it, but then you're putting a hell of a lot of trust in that mechanism. What if it breaks? Then your dog's five metres to the road again. It's, it's, you know, it's a risk. Yes, the likelihood of it happening is slim to none. Who knows? But I've seen it happen. Next is it can encourage your dog to learn unwanted behaviours. So sometimes like, we think of, you know, retractable leads as being really good for giving them freedom but actually it can be counterproductive when it comes to training because the basis of lead work for your modern force free reward based whatever you want to call them trainers is that dogs get rewarded for being near you and they learn that pulling doesn't work so when they feel tension on their lead you will stop that doesn't tension equates to pulling tension doesn't get you anywhere but with a retractable lead the exact opposite happens i feel tension i lean into it ah, i get to go further so your dog can actually learn that pulling tension on the lead gets them where they want to be quicker and it encourages pulling when you then want to put them back on a short lead whereas other methods will complement that theory so it can cause confusion inconsistencies which will encourage pulling on the lead. And kind of tied into this is that it can create an unex, a sort of a unpleasant experience. Because if you've ever used one of these leads, you'll know when you want to shorten it, what do you do? You kind of hold the button down, you then release it and move your hand really quickly, grab it, pull it towards you, so you back and forth, shortening this lead. And your dog's getting loads of quick, sudden jolts as you're releasing it, pulling it, dropping, putting the lock back on, pulling it towards you, opening it, putting your hand out again. And so when you're trying to retract it really quickly, you're creating a real jerky, um, solid jolt happening. Um, that's likely to feel pretty uncomfortable for your dog. If your dog's already nervous or already anxious, they may then respond to that and go, well, God, that really weird jolting and funny sounds and tightening of the lead happens every time I'm near a person, every time I'm near a dog. And therefore, if they're already feeling a little bit anxious, they're then feeling uncomfortable too. It can, not always, but it could then be connected to them feeling more and more and more anxious or not fully relaxed around other people, dogs, animals, etc. And obviously when you've got that um sort of transition a lot of people believe that the transition from um sort of lead work to off lead the retractable lead helps or oh, they get lots of freedom so i can practice their recall absolutely true it does it gives you the freedom they can be five or ten meters ahead of you you can recall them they can come back to you without having to manage that long line that's really awkward but then your dog always knows you're on a lead because they can always feel that tension they always know that they're on a lead because they feel it. They can feel it pulling against their harness. They can feel it against their lead. When you unclip their lead, they go, hey, I'm off. Therefore, there is a still a feeling that can connect them to behavior. And if we're relying on that lead pressure with the retractable lead, it doesn't always transfer to being off lead. So they will be able to see and feel that they are on that lead. And then the transition to off lead is going to be so much harder because they will know they're off lead. When you're training with a long line, they feel free because there's no tension. So it can help your lead work just a little bit, maybe. Um, so obviously, there's quite a few things as reasons as why I don't like them. As we said at the beginning, for some dogs, retractable leads are going to be absolutely fine. If your dog is calm, relaxed, well-mannered, doesn't have a recall issue, or they're just for short-term loose use, if you're using them in big open spaces, away from other people, not going near other dogs, not near roads, you're not close enough for meeting people to avoid getting tangled, all of those things may mean that your dog and you work better on a retractable lead, but you can still be aware of the dangers of them 
for when you see somebody on one with a bouncy puppy. Um, the one caveat is the same with sort of long lines is we always attach them to the back of a harness rather than a collar to minimise any tension and strain on the neck. Some situations, yes, you may find a retractable lead easy, but I would urge you to look at alternative options um, unless your dog is so polite and well-mannered and chill. Instead, your alternative, when you're on a road, path, busy places, your standard two or three metre fixed length lead is ideal um, because they can't get too far away from you. They can't be so far away they get tangled up. They can't move into the road, etc. When you're in wide open spaces and there's freedom for them to be that little bit further away, you want to give your dog a chance to sniff. You want to allow them to practice their recall and move further away from you. Have a little mooch and a wander then the safer alternative to a retractable lead is a fixed length long line. So these are often made of the same or similar material as a short two or three metre lead. They are just longer and you can obviously pick your five, your seven, your 50, your 10, whatever, whatever meterage you prefer. But there is less chance of injury. They're not going to tie up around people and cause friction burns. They're not going to lose your fingers as much. The risk, there's obviously still going to be a risk. They're not risk-free, but the risk is minimised. Um, they can easily and safely be shortened and lengthened. Um, and they give that more freedom to work on your recall and support your lead work, which is really, really important. Um, personally, for me, standard I use is five metres. I find five metres is enough. Five metres is long enough that they can go away, a bit away from me. Um, not so far that it's hard to refocus. I do use a seven and a half, to be very precise, seven and a half metre lead um, <laughs> when I'm in really, really big open spaces with my youngest dog who likes to naturally be a little bit further away from me than the labs do. Um, he's a golden retriever and he prefers, I don't know, he just hangs out a little bit further away from me naturally, which isn't a problem as long as he comes back. The labs are generally going to be by my side a little bit more. Um, so seven and a half metres just gives him that little bit extra when we're in really big, fun places like the beach. Um, so... I'm not saying never, ever, ever use a retractable lead. I'm just saying be aware of the dangers. They are the reasons I don't like them. So the cord being thin, potential breaking of the lead, getting tangled, injuries to you, injuries to the dog, the risk of them being too far away, moving into the road, potential training fallout of um, affecting your lead work and recall, the negative associations that can be connected with more anxious dogs, um, the playing with other dog aspect, um, all of those things are things I'll just be aware of. Is it safe and is it right for your dog or would a long line be safer for you all? Hopefully you have found that episode useful. I'd say if it was down to me, I would probably bin them completely. Um, but that is my personal preference. Hopefully it has been useful for you. Have a great week and I'll catch up with you all really soon. Thank you for listening to The Dynamic Dog Owner with me, Debbie Potter. See you next time.